story. Okay. Hello, everybody. This is Young Family Taiji, traditional form, section one. And the new move today is going to be white crane spreads its wing. So for our warm up, let's just do the form up to uh, raise hands, which is the move before white crane. Okay, so I'm gonna turn around. And prepare, head up, hips down, hands by your side, relax, stretching, and opening. Then take your arms as you come up to shoulder level and press down almost to the bottom. Rest the bird's tail, ward off left. Shift left, turn right, all the weight on the right, step and close, turn and separate. Right ward off, shift right, turn the left foot to the corner, pull left ward off, down right, come in, step and close, shift weight, separate. Roll back, rotate your arms as you turn to the corner. Turn as you shift your weight back to the other corner. Press, pull in the right, attach the left and expand forward. Push, square up your shoulders, flatten your hands, come back over a ball, Hands in front of your chest and push to shoulder level. Single whip, extend your hands and flatten. Pull and turn all the way around. Press down, release the left foot. Ward off with the left, hook hand with the right. Standing ward off, step, deflect, strike. Raise hands and step forward. Shift right. Turn the left foot to the corner. Circle your arms as you push off your right ball. Root the right heel and close. How did that feel? <laughs> so, um, one of the concerns that Master Yang always has about raise hands and step forward is the move looks so simple, but it's hard for people to feel the energy. So mm -hmm. if I do it toward you, let's say I'm coming from single width. So I'm shifting my weight back so that my left toe can turn. As I circle, I'm pushing off the right ball, root and close. So what you want is the turning and rooting at the same time. And that's what gives you that energy before the close. Okay, mm -hmm. so to repeat, if I'm at single width, I'm shifting back. I'm turning my left toe to the corner. I'm pushing off the front left foot, I mean right foot. Then I root, I root first and then turn and close. So my hips are already at the corner because my hips always follow the back foot. But my waist, when I was here, was my shoulders are square and my waist turn, in addition to putting that 30% in the front is what gives me the energy for this one, okay? Hi, Rogelio.
Hello. <laughs> Okay, so let's go one more time from single width through raise hands and step forward. So I'm going to do the same direction as you. We're going to start at push. Push. Right foot forward. Single width. Flatten your hands and extend. Pull and turn all the way around. Press down, release the left foot. Ward off with the left, hook hand with the right. Standing ward off, step, deflect, strike. Raise hands and step forward. Shift weight to the right to release the left foot. Turn to the corner. Then circle your arms as you push off the right ball. Root and turn and close. Okay. Any questions on that one? Okay. So the next one is um, white crane. And white crane is more complicated than, uh, than raise hand. So let's look at the footwork first. Well, first I'm going to do it to show you in the direction that you would be doing it. Then I'll turn so that you can see the hands and so on better. Okay, so if I were doing it from the direction you would be doing it, I'm at the close of raise hands and step forward. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull down and transfer my weight to the back. Circle my arms. Step and close. Turn. Step and open. So I am changing direction. Okay. I would have started at what would have been 12 o'clock if you had started at 12 o'clock. And then I'm going to go to 9 o'clock at the end of the move. And this introduces also another kind of empty stance. So this would be the empty stance with the ball touch. Okay. So when you did raise hands and step forward, okay, you went from a bow stance to an empty stance with the heel touch. So you were run, one line, two sides, and your whole heel was on the ground, and you had 30% of the weight on the front. So when you turn and put that 30% in the front, that's where your energy came. In this other case, we're going to have ball touch. So when you had heel touch, you had essentially all of your heel on the ground, but none of your toes. With the ball touch, what's gonna to happen is you're going to have the ball of your foot, but no heel, okay? And also 30% in the front. So when you had, um, uh, the raise hands and step forward. What happened was that you were, this is essentially like a breaking energy. You're breaking somebody's arm as you come here. The white crane, even though it looks like it would be, you know, a, a split energy, this is called a split energy. It looks like it might be a split energy. It's not because it's actually two ward offs. So it's not, it's a defensive move. It's not a strike. Okay. So I'm going to show it to you from the side before we go through the details of the footwork and hands and so on. So if I were at 
raise hand at the end of raise hands and step forward. I have 30% of the weight in the front. What white crane spreads its wings looks like is a rotation and a pull down. All the weight goes to the back. Circle, step and close, turn, empty stance and open. So this is a defensive move because what it presumes is somebody's coming at you with two, uh, with both uh, arms and you are separating them, okay? So this is a separating type mo movement. And um, it looks complicated because there are, uh, because you have a change of direction and so on. But um, if you look at the footwork, I'll do it the way you would be doing it and then I'll do it so you'll see better. So if you are going from the heel touch empty stance, what you're going to do is you're going to move all your weight to the back. Then you're going to step. So your two feet are parallel to each other. Then you're going to shift your weight to the right as you turn. And then you're going to make your ball touch empty stance to the side. Okay, so if I were going to do it in this direction, I would have empty stance, then shift weight back, step, shift weight to the front and turn, empty stance to the front uh, with the uh, ball touch, okay? Now the hands are a bit more complicated and <laughs> Uh, I'm going to show it to you from the side. So, or yeah, I'm going to show it to you from the side. So what happens is when you are at raise hands, your hands, the palms are kind of diagonally facing each other, right? This hand is pointing to the middle of the forearm of the other hand. And they are not like this, they're kind of turned in, okay? When you start this move, what you're gonna do is you're going to turn your hands so that the palms face each other. So the right hand palm down, the left hand palm up. And then you're going to pull down as you shift weight. And then you're going to circle and step and close. And then shift your weight to the front leg. Turn as you pivot the left foot. Step and open. Now, there are a lot of places in the form where we do step and close. Like when you did ward off, left ward off, right ward off, and so on. The thing that's different about this one is the transition to that uh, close. So what happens is when you're here and you turn your hands and you pull down, what you're going to do is you're going to end up like this. So what happens with your left hand? What happens with the left hand? You're going to circle down and it becomes the top part of your clothes, right? The trick here is that you can keep coming down. And then once you get to the bottom, how are you going to turn to get to the top? What you do not want is this, you don't want to raise your shoulder, right? So how do you avoid doing that? What you're going to do is you're going to turn your elbow and then come around. 
So can you see? When I get to the bottom, I'm gonna turn my elbow and come around so that my shoulder doesn't hike up, okay? So come down. You're gonna use this a lot in the form, but, uh, and when you look at it from the side, okay, if, if you, I do it the same direction as you, what you're going to see is when I do this, it allows me to keep the circle more in one plane. If I, if I don't do that, if I don't turn my elbow, I have a tendency to get my, not only does my elbow come up, but my hand comes out in order to get to that final position. So the technique here is an elbow turn. So you start turning with your shoulder, you turn your elbow, and then you come around. Okay. So here, you turn. Okay. So when you get to the bottom, your elbow turns around. If you think of staying in the same plane, it will be easier. So when you're here, you're pulling down. Then you turn, step and close. So here, pull down. Step and close. Turn. Step and open. So the reason you have the step as opposed to, let's say you were here and you come down, why not just pivot your foot, right? Why do I have to step? And the reason is from the martial perspective, you want to preserve the option of going a different direction. So when you, when you pivot, you are set in terms of your position. When you step, I can step here, I can step here. I have a lot more options. And so this is to show that I have the option of moving to another place if I choose. Okay, so when you come here and you step and close, what you're showing with the turn is in the old form, you had a shoulder strike where you, you essentially hit someone with your shoulder and we don't do that, but we show it with the turn. So when we come down and we step and close, our turn shows the shoulder strike. And then open. Okay. Did you have a question on that? Yes, no. Okay. So the uh, coordination is rotate hands, pull down as you shift weight. Then as you rotate, step and close, turn, empty stance, step and open.
So when you open, I want you to open with a forearm rotation like you did for rollback. Remember when you were at rollback, when, when you got to the corner, how did you get there? You rotated your arms, right? You did not go here and then flip at the end, right? You, you were here, then you rotated both arms and you got to that position. Likewise, here, when you step and close. So when you come here and you step and close, you turn. I want you to rotate the bottom arm the whole way as you come up, okay? So this is a guard against a uh, strike at your head. So you want to be up. Your hand wants to be up above your head. But you want to be up in such a way that your shoulder still feels down. In other words, you do not want to be like this. Your shoulder will still feel like it's down. It will feel like you have this position and you just raised it here, okay? So even though it's up, it won't feel like it's up, okay? So in terms of the timing, pull down, step and close, turn and pivot the left foot at the same time, right? And as you start raising the right hand, step and so by the time you're here, you're starting to put 30% into the front, okay? So when you, when you step and close, pivot, step. So you're from here to here, you're moving that 30% into that front foot. Okay. So it's here. The left hand is just in front of your hip. It's the resting place. Remember when you open? That's where the hand is just like opening, okay? Your right hand starts facing out until you, until it's about chest height or from when it so, first starts coming up. So when you're here, you're stepping and closing, right? Uh -huh. You're rotating. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to step and start, step and start. Then, so from here, you're turning, 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 turning until your palm is out. Yes? Okay. So, when you're here, you turn your palms, then you shift weight back, circle, step and close, turn, step and open. One of the things you have to remember because, especially because this is a defensive position, is that you have to keep your body shape. Meaning, when you do your close, do not close close to you. 
you want to keep your opponent away from you. So keep your distance, okay? So you should always keep like space in your armpits and space between your chest and your hands, okay? So that when you separate, you're separating out, okay? Any questions? Let's practice. Okay, so I'm gonna keep doing it in this direction just so that you can see better. Uh, but uh, later on, I'll do it in the same direction as you, okay? So when you, we are right foot forward, empty stance, heel touch, then shift weight, you're gonna turn your hands, then shift weight back as you pull down, circle, step and close, turn, step and open. I didn't see the step, uh, the first step. Okay. You don't, only, okay. you don't only rotate, but you actually step. Okay, so here, yeah. I'm at empty stance. Huh? Then I turn my hands and I shift my weight back. All my weight is on my back foot, okay? I'm circling my arms. I'm going to close and step. Okay, that's what I mean. Okay, so this foot is to the corner and parallel to the other foot. Then oh. shift weight to the right. Turn and pivot the left foot. Then step and put 30% in front. One of the things um, you have to be a little careful about is not to put too much weight on front. So if I do it in this direction, if I'm here, I'm shifting back. Step and close. Turn. So I guess that was not a good direction to do it. In. Let's see. <laughs> what would be a good one? What, what is a good direction to do it? In? Let's see. I want to. Uh, actually, the original direction was probably a good direction because I'm pulling down. Step and close, turn, step and open. So what I was trying to show you was if I started here and I pulled down and I step and close, turn, step and open. Can you see that? I do not have a lot of weight in front, okay? I want to maintain 70% of my weight in the back, mm -hmm. yeah. but I still want to lean forward. So I'm leaning forward from my hips instead of being forward from the heel. So if I were in bow stance, I would be forward from my heel. But an empty stance, I am forward from my hips. And that is true regardless of whether I'm doing a, a ball touch or a heel touch, okay? You are always leaning forward because you want your mass to be between your feet, okay? So Rahelia, when you were doing uh, uh, push hands, I was trying to tell you to keep your weight between your feet. Well, it's, it's this principle, right? That you want to keep your weight between your feet. So if I'm going to do it in this direction, I'm starting here. I turn my hands. I pull down. Circle. Step and close. Turn. Step 
and open. It's, it's a compromise. You have to, you have to have 30% in the front because otherwise you don't have enough support. So when you need the support when you're separating, but you don't want to have too much and you want your weight to stay back. So it takes a little practice just to get the proportion of weight. So in order to get that, your knee is not even close to your toe uh, position. It's further back, probably all the way to the ankle. Or I what? mean, here, if you're doing this, your knee is not even here. It's like... Your knee is almost straight. Almost straight, yeah. It's almost straight. Because what happens is... If, if you remember when you were in a bow stance, your knee is <laughs> forward. Okay. It's pretty much uh, almost, it's a little forward of straight up and down, in fact. But if you're in an empty stance, your feet are closer together. You're, you have one line, two sides, and your either heel touch or ball touch. But one thing I want you to notice is your stride length is about the same. So very often people think, oh, with an empty stance, you know, I will be more upright and my stride will be shorter. And in other words, they think that Okay, if I'm doing a bow stance, I'm going to come here. If I'm doing an empty stance, since my weight is further back, I'll just come here. But no, it's the same length. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the reason that's important is that when you shorten your stride, you have less stability, but you have more agility. So that is the trade-off, okay? If you want to be more agile, you would shorten your stride, you would be more upright. In other words, think about it this way. If you have a big base, you know, you're much more stable but you're less able to move around. Whereas if you have a shorter base, it's much easier for you to move around, right? So same principle. But you're not as stable because- You're not as stable, but you are more agile. So, uh, People think that with the empty stance that, oh, I want that agility, but you still have to maintain that stability, okay? Because you have to have that 30% to push off. When you're, when you're going like this, you know, you're pushing into the ground, okay? The difference in uh, empty stance and, um, both stands, in addition to the width, you know, one is shoulder width and one is one line, two sides, the, uh, the empty stance, you feel more of a downward feeling when you are um, doing the, thir uh, the 30%. When you're doing a bow stance, you have a forward component. When you go into, when you get that 60%, you don't have that with the empty stance. Your empty stance is down. So that's why you should think of, you know, that support aspect of Dong Chong when you're doing 
the empty set. Does that make sense? So think about, I want you to make sure to get that 30%, but don't overdo it. <laughs> okay. So let's practice a few more times. Okay. I'm going to start doing it in the same direction as you. So we have an empty stance, heel touch, then white crane spreads its wings. Turn your hands, pull down, shift all your weight to the back, circle your arms, step and close, turn, step and open. Once again, empty stance, heel touch. Raise hands and step forward. Then white crane spreads its wings. Turn your hands, pull down, shift all your weight back. Circle your arms, step and close. Turn, step and open. How does that feel? Okay. <laughs> okay, a couple more times and then we're going to do it from single whip because then you can get both the uh, heel touch empty stance and the ball touch empty stance. Okay, so one more time for just white crane. So at the end of uh, raise hands and step forward. White queen spreads its wings. Turn your hands. Pull down. Shift all your weight to the back. Circle your arms. Step and close. Turn. Step and open. Okay. So from single width. Actually, let's do it from push. Right foot forward, push. Then we're going to go into single width. Shift back, flatten your hands. Turn and pull all the way around. Press down, release the left foot. Ward off with the left, hook hand with the right. Standing ward off, step. Deflect, strike, raise hands and step forward, shift right, turn the left toe to the corner, circle your arms as you push off the right ball, root the right heel, turn and close, white crane spreads its wings, turn your hands, pull down, Circle your arms, step and close, turn, step and open. So there's a little footwork detail I forgot, which is that when you, when you come down and you step and close, and you pivot, you should pull in before you step out, okay? The general rule is if you're changing direction or if your feet are far apart, you should pull in in order to stack and then step up, okay? So you did that with right ward off. Right? When you were at left ward off, you turned and then you pulled in before you stepped out. Right? So, same principle. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, yes, do you have a question? 
No. Okay. So let's do that one more time from push. Okay. So we're at push, right hand, a right foot forward, single whip, shift back, flatten your hands, turn and pull all the way around. Press down, release the front foot. Ward off with the left, hook hand with the right. Standing ward off, step, deflect, strike. Raise hands and step forward. Shift right, turn the left toe to the corner. Circle your arms as you push off the right ball. Root the right heel as you turn and close. White crane spreads its wings. Turn your hands. Pull down, shift all the weight to the back. Circle your arms. Step and close. Turn. Step and open. One more time and we'll do it from the beginning, okay? So, push, white, uh, single whip, shift back, flatten your hands, turn and pull all the way around, press down, release the front foot, ward off with the left, hook hand with the right, standing ward off, step, deflect, strike. Raise hands and step forward. Shift right. Turn the left toe to the corner. Push off the ball of the right foot. Circle your arms. Root and close. White crane spreads its wings. Turn your hands. Pull down. Shift all your weight to the back. Circle your arms. Step and close, turn, step and open. Okay. So let's do it from the beginning a couple of times and then we'll close class, okay? I'm going to turn around and do it the same direction as you. Prepare. Head up, hips down, hands by your side. Opening. Rotate your arms as you come up to shoulder level. Press down, almost to the bottom. Press the bird's tail ward off left. Shift left, turn right, all the way to the right, step and close, turn and open. Right ward off, shift right, turn left foot to the corner, pull left, ward off right, come in, step and close, shift and open, roll back, rotate your arms as you turn to the corner, come back as you shift weight to the other corner, press, pull in the right, attach the left, expand forward, push, square up your shoulders, flatten your hands, come back over a ball, Hands in front of your chest and push to shoulder level. Single whip. Flatten your hands as you shift your weight back. Turn. Press down. Release the front foot. Ward off with the left. Hook in with the right. Pull in the left foot. Standing ward off. Deflect. Strike, raise hands and step forward. Shift right, turn the left foot to the corner. Rotate your arms as you push off the right ball. 
root the right heel, turn and close. White crane spreads its wings. Turn your hands, pull down, circle, step and close, turn, step and open. How did that feel? Good. Okay. So let's do one more time and we'll close. Okay. Prepare. Opening. Rotate your arms up, up to shoulder level. Press down almost to the bottom. Press the bird's tail, ward off left. Shift left, turn right, all the weight on the right. Step and close, shift and open. Ward off right, shift right. Turn the left foot to the corner. Pull left, ward off down right. Come in, step and close. Shift and open. Ward off, uh, low back. Turn as you rotate your arms. Circle back and shift weight as you go to the other corner. Pull in the right, touch the left, expand forward. Push, square up your shoulders, flatten your hands. Come back over a ball, hands in front of your chest, push up to shoulder level. Single whip, extend your hands and flatten. Pull and turn all the way around. Push down, release the left foot, ward off with the left, hook hand with the right, pull in, standing ward off step, deflect, Strike. Raise hands and step forward. Shift right. Turn the left toe to the corner. Push off the right ball as you circle your arms. Root the right heel. Turn and close. White crane spreads its wings. Turn your hands. Pull down as you shift the weight back. Circle your arms, step and close, turn, step and open. Okay? Okay. Okay, well, thank you for coming to class. And next week will be the exciting, uh, <laughs> Swing step, right? <laughs> All the brush knees. Okay. The first left brush knee, and that will be next week's lesson. So thank you very much. And I'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.